I'd say this feels like quorum if we want to kick it off. Or are we waiting for a full Discord room? I don't know if that <laughs> yeah. happens. Yeah, I think we can start. And then anyway, we're recording. I know a lot of people are still on summer holiday as well. So it will be just nice to have this uh, artifact of our partnership and actually all be in a room together. That hasn't happened. Um, the ComSec region team and, and welcoming also all of the community here. i um, really excited to announce our, uh, I guess, formal partnership. But yeah, maybe we can start off with a round of introductions um, for who's with us with the regen team, a couple of common stackers, and then we can jump into it. And anybody uh, joining from the community would also love to hear from you in a little bit. And if you want to post anything in the community hall channel, um, feel free to do so. So I suppose I'll pass to Jeff, because Jeff, I think, originally had met, uh, I would be curious just to hear how you met Greg, I think, was the, the main connection in this uh, group or space that kind of catalyzed everything that's happening now. So, uh. Sure, absolutely. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm, I'm Jeff. Uh, I've been running in the common stack circles um, since the common stack was a thing. Um, yeah, really working towards sort of modular primitives um, for, for DAO ecosystems. We call them commons, um, you know, very similar to a lot of the work of, of different groups here. Um, you know, the Zodiac uh, from, from Gnosis, uh, super cool stuff. Um, very similar to that, um, you know, just sort of in, in design pattern um, rather than specific deployments. Um, yeah, I ran into Greg and actually I think a lot of the regen team here at, at Full Node. Um, and I was just blown away at the, their work on the Cosmos SDK. Um, and I mean, also the, the underlying, you know, the purpose, the heart uh, behind the technology and, um, you know, agroecology and um, using blockchains to, um, you know, to address larger problems like uh, uh, climate change and carbon sequestration. And um, yeah, just was always blown away by the thought leadership uh, and technical leadership uh, of the Regen team. So. Um, Greg and I had some chats. Um, I jumped on the Planetary Regeneration podcast sometime last year. Maybe that was even a year and a half ago. Um, and yeah, the, um, we just kept uh, talking about how we can uh, work together. There's so much um, you know, shared momentum and uh, direction between these projects. Um, so yeah, it's been a wonderful journey. And I mean, got to meet a lot more of the Regen team along the way. Um, and of course, the Common Stack uh, team and community of course, had so much to do with this partnership. So really excited to, to dig in, um, answer some questions about, uh, about the partnership, about how it looks, um, and of course, building this with, with the community as well. Um, this is definitely an iterative process, uh, and we're really happy to be the first um, uh, community staking DAO on, on Regen Network. Um, and yeah, really excited mm -hmm. to, to chat more about that with, uh, with everybody here. Um, should I pass it to someone in particular, Jess, uh, or? Yeah, Should we bounce Greg. back between common stack and regen, or? <laughs> yeah, maybe we pass to Greg, and uh, we can pass around to the regen team, and then back. Oh, good. <clears throat> hey, everybody. I'm Gregory. I'm the uh, co-founder of Regen Network as kind of a, a vision or a concept and a community, and also the CEO of R&D Inc., which is um, a business that focuses on building, we meet, we maintain the Cosmos SDK, and we also are the main team maintaining Region Ledger as a software. We also do some science work, and um, <clears throat> we're sort of the sister organization to Region Foundation, which you'll see some other folks here from from that side. Um, yeah, and uh, it, I've been inspired. I'm. You know, I'm a member of uh, Common Stack and the Trusted Seed, and um, it just have been sort of tracking and excited about what's been happening in terms of research and development for community tools for Commons. And I think I'm really attracted to exploring the intersection between markets and Commons. And I guess just sort of like philosophically i have a a bias or a or a, a set of assumptions that lead me to believe that you could actually conceptualize markets as a type of commons and that commons are really sort of like the meta structure so there's a set of people who are agreeing upon a set of rules about market exchange 
And that actually, if we embed markets inside of the social agreements that are holding them, and we understand that that's part of social construction of value, and then we take that another step and, and ask the question, how do we align socially constructed value with ecological health? You essentially get Region Network's mission. And so as a community, we're really focused on uh, building the tools so that um, at, at a planetary level, as well as really a hyper-local level, bioregional and community, because regeneration is local, although climate, the climate crisis is global. What are the tools, market mechanisms and commons management systems that allow us to realign sort of short-term economic welfare and profit uh, for individual actors and communities with long-term ecological health. And we've been pretty pragmatic at Regen around taking advantage of current market trends and voluntary carbon markets and other things to just kind of build momentum and community and market interfaces. But really at the end of the day, our mission is really this larger economic transformation that re-embeds markets inside of commons puts community members in charge of those rules and links it to ecological health. And so I think there's a huge amount of resonance with the amazing work that Commons Stack is doing to build those tools. So we've been really excited for, for Commons Stack and the trusted seed to step in as one of the first or the first community staking DAO uh, organizations. And I think I'll allow our um, foundation members to talk a little bit more in depth about the, the concept of the community staking DAOs. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll pause there and super grateful to be here. Um, who should I pass the baton on to, Jessica? Um, however you'd like. Maybe we do, um, yeah, some short intros with the team and they can speak into a little bit of the areas and maybe you can touch on as well, like um, there's Regen Network, um, there's Ledger, there's Foundation, so maybe also, so maybe Will or, or Raves can, can kind of touch on a little bit as well, like what are the different kind of uh, operating Asi. entities within region. Pass it to Ravathi to take it. Okay. I'm really happy to be here, and um, it's, it's kind of strange how we've gotten used to these uh, virtual rooms and you still feel the bono me through the, through the screen because I'm pretty sure two years ago we wouldn't be able to, but, 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 I, but I feel it here uh, and, 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 and that's great, right? Um, that's part of the reason we're, we're sort of formally having a partnership. Uh, the, the corner of the region network that I come from is the sister nonprofit to the, the tech development company that uh, Gregory heads, which is R&D. Um, right now and the nonprofit uh, has i can talk more about it a little bit later but it also has the mandate of distributing 30 percent of the region tokens to stakeholders um, who would help steward the ledger and sort of help steer the future of the ledger towards positive climate impact and uh, and and it's a very green and growing program, and we uh, we are super thrilled that you know Common Stack and the whole community is is one of the first uh, communities to be onboarded onto the program. Um, we the ledger is is the actual Cosmos SDK based public proof of stake ecological blockchain that connects us all together, the region ledger. Uh, there's also a region registry, which you'll hear thrown about, uh, which is uh, essentially how uh, the, uh, the, the MRV system behind it, sort of the uh, ecosystem services um, that, that connect us together, the mutual organizations. Um, and I mean, I can go more into it a little bit later, but I'm going to uh, pass on the talking stick to Will. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Will. I'm president of the board at Regen Foundation. Uh, we have our 
puppy downstairs who you may hear a little bit on the call. Um, I think the thing that I'd like to call out is just that uh, Gregory and I had bounced around this idea for community staking DAOs, I guess, uh, about three years ago at first, and just thinking about uh, what are the dynamics that we want in governance and in a uh, kind of traditional proof of stake architecture, it's um, you can essentially buy buy votes through buying staking tokens. And when we were starting Regen Network, we were thinking, well, there's a, a lot of of groups that are very important to the work we want to do, and they're likely groups that, for various reasons, won't be able to 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 buy. Uh, a significant amount of stake in the network. And uh, so that's that was uh, kind of the inspiration for this architecture and for putting uh, this kind of third of the token supply into this model. And uh, I think that it has a lot of resonance with what uh, you all are exploring in common stack of kind of the intersection between uh, crypto and governance and commons and uh, iterating and experimenting on different governance models. So I guess all I'd say is I feel like uh, there's kind of nobody better to to be starting this work with, to, to be asking some of these questions about how do we evolve proof of stake um, as, a, as a kind of blockchain uh, consensus mechanism. Um, well, yeah, we have a few other folks from the regen side of things. I see our, our board member, Kia, over here. Uh, Kia, I'm not sure if you have anything you'd like to, to share here about how you're seeing all this. I'd be happy to hand the mic over to you. Well, and also if Kia is not ready, right now, I'll go ahead. Yep. Sure, so happy to be here and thanks for the mic pass. Um, in part to reiterate everything that's been said, I think one of the most interesting reasons um, and kind of compelling reasons why I wanted to join Regen Foundation as a board member is because of the community staking DAO initiative. Um, so a little bit of background about me, I'm Kia. I've worked in the Ethereum space officially for the last four years, but I've been around the ecosystem for a bit longer than that. I work at Gnosis. Um, over the last four years, I've primarily focused on strategy and communications. However, over the last kind of six months to a year, I've been able to focus more efforts on decentralized governance. So looking towards particularly modu modular and composable DAO tooling. Uh, and yesterday we had a big launch and I'm looking forward to of a product line called Zodiac. And I'm looking forward to how some of the patterns there can really inform the Cosmos governance ecosystem and how we can port, port some of those patterns. Um, and the reason why I think that Regen Foundations and just Regen Network's mission at large is probably the most interesting decentralized governance initiative in the space um, from a social level is because it really asks the question of um, how do we give stake to actors in a network that normally do not have stake? And um, that feels like a really, really critical question as um, protocol governance of digital assets and other forms of capital um, become really paramount in our society. And I think uh, a lot of us here in this space are working under the assumption that they will. So developing these patterns and onboarding communities that might not be onboarded otherwise feels really important. Uh, I'm really, really glad that we could partner with you guys, uh, Common Stack, to bring on as the first community staking DAO, because I think you have so much experience of working with early stage tooling, but also rare within the space of focus on the social level as well knowing that governance isn't just the tools that you bring together, but the kind of people and social fabric and cultural patterns that you document around them. Um, so I think I, I really see you as kind of equal partners in the Community Staking DAO initiative in the sense that we can develop some good working patterns together about how to bring even more communities into this space and really share in that success. So cheers, I'm just happy to be here and really glad that everybody here is on board. And in terms of mic pass, um, I would also love to hear perhaps someone 
uh, coming from the network side of Regen as well about how they see kind of um, this partnership working and potentially um, what they see as groups and kind of protocol governance and maybe what that means at a higher level. Um, I don't know if looking around at the different avis, um, if anyone wants to jump in, feel free. I won't do an official mic pass. Yeah, um, so if somebody else wants to take that, just jump in. But I'm, um, I think the, the, the provocation or the question really around, you know, what does it, there's sort of twofold here. What does it look like to, to have, to, to include important stakeholders in the governance of a network at the very base layer, layer one, right? Region network is a sovereign blockchain. So we're a member of sort of the Cosmos interchain thesis of how security and network governance and scalability is achieved through interoperability between sovereign blockchains. So we really are asking the question, not only how do we include participants, network participants in governance over functionality, such as standards for eco credit issuance or uh, parameters involved at that application level, but we're also asking participants to govern the protocol itself. So consensus mechanisms and parameters that have to do with our, you know, the, the in, in, inflation rate uh, and you know, do we have a supply cap or not? Do we have a EIP 1559 like burn mechanism or not? And so, so it raises these quite, um, the, be in, involving, for instance, um, in some of the conversations that we have on a daily basis are with, for instance, one of our validators is from the Amazon and uh, his wife is uh, indigenous um, Achuar, and we're in conversations with that community about becoming community staking DAO. And so the, the digital divide, not only to be inviting consideration of how they may be creating their own version of carbon credits, for instance, so that they can create payment mechanisms for their ancestral stewardship of the place that they live in, which benefits everyone, um, and wrangling with the the intersection of, you know, markets and the challenges that that the sort of intercultural challenges there, but also to create a pathway for understanding and trust so that they're able to govern this public infrastructure for ecological accounting and markets and governance is a very sort of tall ask. But I think that grounds it into that that's a real project with real people that's really happening. And one of the things that we're excited about common stack role in that is to have a, a highly technical, technically proficient community that can support us in thinking about the abstract layer of tool deployment, because we, I think we're all aligned in understanding that this sort of inclusion in digital governance around the infrastructure that allows new markets and new sort of governance uh, relationships to be born is really needs to be open and it needs to be accessible and it needs to be inexpensive to deploy, right? So that people can make of it what they will. And so I think hopefully that's a sort of like grounding at another layer around the types of conversations and the big challenge that we really have. It's not going to happen overnight that these these sorts of things are are deployed and we need to be quite sensitive and in a way quite slow and so this isn't really a move fast and break things sort of uh experiment right this is a, a be conscientious be slow be, um, do our best to educate all actors and create a high degree of informed consent around the tools that people are going to use to to program in their their version of socially constructed value Right, and to be able to enforce the rules that empower that um, across different boundaries. So, um, yeah, hopefully that kind of like gets us a layer deeper in the way that you were um, you were pointing.
Yeah, so I guess that kind of speaks to the grand vision. And I guess I should introduce myself since I haven't yet, um, and a few other common stackers on the call uh, for a quick introduction. So I'm Jessica Zartler, and I'm uh, leading the ecosystem development uh, circle, or kind of chakra, as we've been recently referring to in our articles and in the art of understanding the common stack, uh, we're moving to uh, a sociocracy model um, as we have grown and we want to kind of allow more autonomy in this expansion and also we have all these amazing opportunities. Um, so yeah, this community staking DAO uh, came up that, you know, there's an opportunity here to work together towards this large vision of having more uh, inclusive governance structures as you were talking about, um, Greg. So this is also somewhat of, you know, we're co-creating this together, but there's no model for this that currently exists. So so how do we do this? And it's not just something that the Regen team and the Common Stack team are gonna do. Um, we are asking you all and those in the trusted seed and those who aren't to help us um, to shape what this is gonna look like and how we can get from uh, where we are now to the vision that Greg's talking about. Um, so I'm really excited personally because I see also, and this is something I've been very passionate about since I started working in blockchain in 2015, is how do we connect this to the ground? And I think that's what um, Regen and also Cosmos and um, also IXO and the Interchain Foundation are really focusing on is how, how do we make this have real value? How does it really have that impact um, with local communities? And I know there's some really cool community currency initiatives going on as well. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I guess we can share a little more um, about what does this partnership look like. I'm kind of also open to people here on this call to jump into the community hall channel and, and just tell us like what direction do you want to take this conversation in um, and feel free to speak up as well. Uh, but I'll just briefly introduce, um, if we want to pass it to a few common stackers, we've got Chris, Jay, uh, Livia, and Akeme also on the call. Um, if you want to just briefly introduce yourself, where you're at in the world, and anything you might like to say about the partnership before we, we take some kind of questions or, or feedback from the community here, I would love to, to hear. There's Hello. also Dan. Oh, sorry, Libby, go ahead. Oh, and Dan there. I always miss your cat, Dan. Dan can speak a little bit as well about the trusted seed as the trusted seed steward. Yeah, I'll pass it to Dan after. Um, just want to say hello really quick and say that I'm really excited about this partnership and also to learn more about what is happening in the region world. And it's really exciting to hear that there are so many initiatives that want to plug in with things happening on the ground and there is and that there is this uh, awareness of how slow and careful it needs to be and how much work we need to develop until we really have the infrastructure to get to these places with responsibility and yeah i feel i feel very excited for the future conversations that are opening up here um welcome all regen team to our to our common stack uh bubble really happy to see you all here um and i i Briefly, I, I live in Brazil, and I've been mostly working with the cultural build of the token engineering commons, and also um, researching uh, governance and uh, reward systems now more recently. And yeah, um, great to be here, and I'll pass to Dan. Hello. Me, prove my humanity, maybe. Oh, yeah, in human. That's good. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, this is super incredibly exciting. I think I I, I don't know if the, uh, the person I had in mind is the person that maybe you were describing, but I had a one-hour conversation with one of your validators who is in Latin America. It was incredibly fun to talk with Patrick. So that, that was like, wow. So I mean, like uh, the kind of alignment in terms of what's we can do in emerging markets, not only Latin America, but in emerging markets everywhere that has all these bio regions that require stewardship. And anyway, so many ideas, uh, so many things to do. As, um, as as the other guys in the team were mentioning, I am stewarding the trusted seed. I'm very much open to open the trusted seed in a kind of participatory design way to the rest, to the whole. 
I mean, like, uh, how do we push this forward and find value among the members of the trusted seat and the projects that they represent? So that's it's very much like um, yeah, my personal mandate in that sense. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to you know, makes a channel and help make some amazing things happen. Uh, about me quickly, um, originally from Venezuela. I just went like two months out of there, so it's not like it's been a while, but I'm right now in Barcelona, stewarding as well the Give It House. If anybody is in the region or down here, very much welcome to this beautiful space to co-work or maybe stay a couple of nights. So all in the spirit of the commons. And I'll pass it to, I don't know, Chris J. Go, man. Hey everybody. Um, yeah, I I think there's been uh, there's been a lot said uh, in terms of the great things that we're uh, we're approaching here with this partnership, and yeah, really excited. Um, I'm Chris. I uh, I help with the Common Stack um, mostly with uh, community, um, I guess community management and uh, communications. Um, a lot of our communications tools um, and socials. So um, and yeah. I, was uh, really excited to work with uh, Ravati and uh, and uh, Kia on yeah getting this uh, partnership together. Really excited to see uh, basically some of the uh, trusted seed kind of participatory uh, actions developing. So this is this is really one of the first major um, uh, yeah things that the trusted seed can participate in. Um, that's that's kind of outside of the the common stack um, specific. So really, yeah, really curious to see how these uh, kind of community and network bridge uh, bridges come together. Uh, really excited to uh, have our community uh, who has been yeah really looking at some of these governance questions and uh, kind of uh, yeah just structures and and tools that we can use and really kind of sharing that with uh, with the regen uh, side of things and and helping kind of steward steward the network um, and uh, c contribute how we can so yeah really excited to be a part of this really excited to to have to be launching this uh, now and uh, uh, yeah curious to see how how the trusted seed uh, engages with it and uh, really just wanting to help push that forward. So um, I will pass back to, uh, I, I guess, Jeff, have we, I guess, yeah, we heard from you already. Um, Jess, do you want to take it back? Uh, I'm trying to think if there's yeah, anyone sure. else we need to chat with. <laughs> We've got a Kenny and Ivy, if, if you guys just want to say hi, and then maybe we jump into a little bit about um, sharing what we have in this partnership and, and the start and, and kind of take a little bit of uh, crowdsource the collective intelligence on what do we do? <laughs> what do we do next? So, um, Kenny, do you want to say hi and Ivy? And I yeah. just wanted hi. to say also, Yanisi and Maria are here also from, from the common stack. Um, no, no pressure for everyone to speak up, but if you feel free uh, and take it away, Kenny. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ekene and I live in Nigeria. I support common stacks via content distributions and the social. Uh, it's really excited of uh, you know, seeing region and everything coming together. I followed the conversation on on the uh, email, and just like Chris said, I'm quite curious to see how this all pans out. And um, kudos to the region team for trusting common stack to help them provide the technical team that you you need and. It's really a great partnership from what I've seen so far and what we've all heard. So yes, it's exciting to see how we could help you couch your message to reach out to uh, your audience. So welcome on board. I'll pass to Yenisi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Yenisi. Uh, I'm from Venezuela, too, of Daniel and Maria. I'm really happy about uh, this uh, partnership. I think uh, this will be awesome for the team and for all the trusted seat members. I look forward to see how is this going to develop and to grow up. The idea is to grow up together. So I am really happy about this. I pass it to Maria.
everyone. Uh, I'm excited to, to be here, uh, knowing everyone, everyone, and especially with this uh, this partnership, I'm excited to, to see what's coming. And every every subject, every topic is amazing, and uh, I'm really excited about this partnership. So I'll pass it again to I don't know. I think Ivy. I don't know if you will talk with. Yeah, I pass it to yeah. Ivy. Thanks, Maggie. Uh, I'm Ivy and I live in the Philippines. So I've been supporting the operations of uh, Common Staff and I'm excited to be here. And yeah, I'm uh, very excited to participate uh, outside uh, other organizations outside uh, Common Staff and uh, TEC. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to participate in, the, uh, in this partnership with the uh, Region Foundation. And yeah, and I pass it back to you, Jess. Sure. I guess um, we can chat a little bit about, um, and if anyone has any questions and they want to drop in the community hall channel. Um, so basically, uh, the partnership is focused on a lot of areas that we can work on together, uh, but the main focus is building this first community staking DAO. As I said, there's not really an existing model. Um, we've talked a little bit about the vision and the why. Um, so the what, and at least in the short term, is that the trusted seed is going to be stewarding a pool of tokens, uh, the seed regen tokens, which are, which are non-transferable but accrue interest. Um, so there will be kind of a pool of funds, um, and the trusted seed will be managing this. So I guess, uh, Dan, do you want to talk just a little bit about um, the trusted seed? We've been kind of uh, operating we haven't had as much particip participation, um, but we're moving more towards, I mean, we, we, we're hesitant to say that it's gonna be a DAO because the DAO has a lot of overhead, but we want to have more participation in, in building uh, what is this project going to look like. Um, so Dan, do you wanna touch a little bit about uh, kind of the vision for the Trusted Seed and, and any thoughts around how you see that mm -hmm. we might kind of move forward in this and, and collecting feedback from the community about what we wanna um, do with these funds and, and obviously we hope to re reinvest that into Regen Network and, and some of the projects there. Yes, I, I can I can shortly get more insight on this. Uh, something that is very beautiful uh, in general is like, uh, you know, like a, basically right now what we've been building is the basis for the process of getting people into the trusted seed and the ebbs and flows and uh, the scale of what the membership and the dashboard is going to be in the near to longer future that's one thing a lot of process and very excited about you know as, as, as i mentioned interfacing with the with the trusted seed in itself in in building this uh, that is one thing but um in terms of from the processes perspective like just thinking about like uh, the everyday is assessing applications you know very 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 something very traditional something very down to earth but just we had a particular question that is for me what keeps me you know motivated every day just, just people the answers of people looking into why they join the trusted seed why do they want to interface uh, with other people with similar values similar purpose um why they come into place it's basically the you know the most energizing thing that that about my work and in that sense thinking about the kind of signal that we get from there is mostly related to the environment uh, regenerative economies uh sdgs um climate change etc cetera, etc cetera. so we're getting a lot of signal of interest from people applying to the trusted seed in general not necessarily with a tokenomics kind of engineering background or development background so just having this this flows and, and connect with you guys like that in, in a more formal way is something that the potential value that we can bring into the world as together is certainly like like you know it's it's very exciting just to to be in this moment in time and thinking about that and and yeah i don't know i'm not only speaking as as dan from commons stack but as dan from b corporations in latin america it's, this is something very exciting for me in general um the other thing is like uh the potential of getting signal signaling from our members into what kind of common deployments what kind of stewarding of resources and what kind of like uh small kind of task-based working groups we can bring into emergence uh, inside of the trusted seat is 
something that um, I certainly look forward to see happening in the shorter term. So um, yeah, just having this into place uh, brings a lot of more structure into how we move forward in this. So I'm happy to co with you guys. Um, yeah, pass it back to Jess or Jeff, I don't know. Somebody with a J in their name. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up. I don't have a J in my name yet, uh, but, but I'll pick it up from there. Uh, uh, thanks, Dan. I, I mean, you you articulated the vision vision pretty well. I think um, what's what's really exciting and what's really interesting, and also to be frank, uh, this there's always two sides of the coin, right? Like this, uh, things that are really uncertain, really new, are either really scary or very exciting. Which in this sort of virtual room, we are probably that class of people who find it very exciting and i think this is one of those because um we are combining what trusted seed is doing which is radical in its own way and what uh, region network uh, the vision is of really combining this um ubiquitous location independent nature of a dao and the facelessness of it with something that's really concrete really connected to the to the land you walk on um uh, the the soil you till and 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 the nature around you that you want to live in harmony with right and uh and and it's i i do think like gregory said it's something we want to go about really intentionally and really respecting the culture and context of all the different people involved and uh, the relationships and the social and cultural context that's created um so we uh, internally, we are also looking at sociocracy and different models, as well as how they may interplay with existing governance models that already exist in indigenous communities, for instance. Um, and so we would we would be thrilled to take that journey alongside you and sort of maybe uh, co uh, co think through that together. Um, and uh, on our call, uh, on this call is also another of our team members whose highs is a new team member. Um, please welcome him. And uh, so sorry he wasn't able to give his intro, but he's, he's actually stewarding um, uh, our endowment program uh, for which Trusted Seed is the first sort of uh, prototype DAO. And so he does have a lot of this uh, thinking that he's going to be doing over the next few months and together with the rest of the community. So uh, over to Hai as if to tell us his thoughts and, and his vision. I just started like last week, so <laughs> sounds a little overwhelming. Um, but um, yeah, I also saw that the Grace is on the call. A big shout out to Grace. Grace is the reason why I'm here. Um, uh, she has a knack of making governance fun. And I think that's uh, something that I see a lot of potential working with Common Stack. Um, you know, governance tends to be really boring. And especially if we're talking about like the core of the operating system behind the economy, it's very, very abstract. So I look forward to you know making it playful and engaging um and yeah i think for me when the what excites me is that money and power seems to seem to be the two big issues that we've got wrong as a civilization and this project looks like it might be addressing both of those um so yeah i'm excited about that um for grand visions and plans it's a little too early maybe in a few weeks after talking to you that's yeah, um, I'll just respond to one thing and then we have a question, which I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the word DAO is kind of a loaded term these days. I guess what we really want to do is build, build stronger relationships within the trusted seed um, that can help us, again, to um, decide what, what we'd like to do. Um, with this pool of tokens or, or how do we want to shape this prototype and we're, we're calling it a DAO but um, yeah in our realm um, what makes a commons kind of like a warm DAO that we care about the culture um, that we're thinking in a way um, that's cooperative and collaborative and 
and um, also regenerative in the way that our economics works. Um, so yeah, I guess there's a question here, which is a great question from T. Rossi. I don't know, do you want to ask your question? If you feel like you want to speak a little bit? Um, yes, sure. Um, um, just to, to understand, because I have recently joined the, the TEC and the Common Stack team, uh, introduced by a Box Science member, and uh, I want to understand uh, how can we help steward in this partnership and um, because there are a lot of roles in the, in the Common Stack and I, I, I want to understand more. Thank you. For sure. I guess I'll, I'll share a little bit about that because I'm often tasked with uh, how to figure out how to flow like the contributions and people that want to collaborate with us. Um, so yeah, I think what we'll really need, being that we're you know an open source uh, project that's a nonprofit, definitely we need some more drivers, some leaders. So maybe somebody because Dan is is very full, his plate is full with running the Trusted Seed. So I think we're gonna be looking for kind of an ambassador or somebody that will be wanting to drive, uh, to help drive this project that will um, take lead on, um, yeah, just igniting conversations, uh, maybe doing a survey, gathering ideas around um, how we wanna move forward on this project together. Also looking at, it's gonna take a lot of research to decide what, um, what kind of tooling are we wanting to use, um, but trying to keep it again kind of low overhead and lightweight um, so that we don't get so focused on the tooling and, and the how and, and forget the why. Um, so yeah, that would be my response. I don't know, Jeff, if you, if you also had some thoughts on this to share. For sure. Um, I, I think this is a really awesome opportunity also um, to talk about sort of the difference between the common stack, which is a, a Swiss association, uh, and the trusted seed, which is sort of a DAO within that uh, Swiss association. So this is really the first time that the trusted seed has had the opportunity to sort of step up as a DAO. Um, you know, and a lot of the, the collaborations, I mean, we're, we've established the partnership, um, but what exactly that entails and how that moves forward uh, is, is also very much open to input from the trusted seed as well. So if that's something that um, that you're interested in or other members of the trusted seed who are who are watching uh, we definitely need more bridges between these different organizations because you know it gets quite in depth as I'm sure anyone who spent some time in the blockchain space knows um, we want to make sure that the trusted seed is able to give you know um, relevant um, advice and and um, you know expertise into uh, the questions that are coming uh, with with this partnership and so on so you know, understanding sort of the, the deeper intricacies of what's going on at both projects and being able to act almost as an ambassador uh, between the organizations as well. There's plenty of opportunity there. Um, there will also be potentially the, the option for the trusted seed to flow some of the funding uh, from these stake tokens to different projects within the trusted seed. Of course, uh, those ambassador roles may be uh, potentially one of those that those places that those funds could flow to so we definitely want to to encourage the um, community involvement um, and I mean there are plenty of ideas to explore um, it's you know we can't do everything all at once but um, yeah really excited to explore those opportunities um, if you're if you're interested we can definitely chat further uh, I imagine we'll we'll have some regular calls set up where we can uh, move those ideas forward and and start um, you know moving taking the right steps in uh, in that direction. And yeah, one one just thing to add to that as well is then, you know, what we want to do and is my understanding, Ravati, and maybe you can speak a little more into this or Will is, you know, we're also looking at developing this as a prototype, as a pattern, um, so that you can work with other groups to also run community staking DAOs. So um, I don't know if any of the region team wants to comment as well more about um, that prototype, like how you envision the prototype and how um, we can uh, help to kind of look at those patterns. What are the cultural patterns? And some of them are going to be local and the hetero more kind of heterogeneous and coming from the, the ground up. Um, but do you want to share a little bit more about 
how you're seeing this as a prototype, but maybe how other communities, like how are you going to be onboarding communities as well going forward? Are you going to kind of wait and see how it plays in common stack? Are you, it sounds like you're already talking to some other groups as well. Um, yeah, sure. I could, uh, I'll share a couple thoughts. Oh, do you want to uh, share, share something here, Raves? Yeah, uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be quick here because um, I just share my screen so then I can stop sharing my screen. Um, I, I, I just shared a bunch of uh, diagrams that we've been brainstorming with on the different stakeholders that we see who will be part of endowment communities and what it really takes to create a regenerative project, right? Like that's uh, that's the core question here. Uh, who are the stakeholders that we really want involved to create a project that has a positive, meaningful ecological impact? And um, so, so in the diagram, you'll see there are stakeholders, including we want token engineers in there who will think through um, ways to structure the infrastructure so the incentives are aligned with positive ecological impact. We want local, um, very place-based communities who will think through what projects need to be there that are relevant for their context and their region, the river that flows next to them, and so on and so forth. Um, climate scientists who can verify that a particular action is indeed uh, good for the planet. and. Uh, all the other uh, stakeholders you see there, you know, altruistic developers and so on and so forth. So all these different stakeholders need to come together for uh, any regenerative project. And the ultimate goal of the endowment program is to have them all involved in the chain. So uh, you can have more such projects and more actions and all of that is facilitated. I mean, there are at least two, um, uh, two ways of action that I see that are uh, 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 over the near term, we will be identifying more of these communities. We have two other prototype sort of communities we are um, endowing as well. Uh, one of them is the open team community who are uh, specifically looking to open source sort of tools for agriculture. And they are also uh, looking at a more distributed form of governance where they'll be choosing uh, projects that their community invests in uh, together and we'll uh, help support them do that and also bring that on to the larger uh, group of communities. And another is uh, the community that Gregory mentioned uh, where we are looking at an existing indigenous nation in Ecuador and Amazon who happen to have constitutional land, rights of nature uh, where they are to see um, if if they were to if it's feasible for them to be you know a digital community a, a DAO on the ledger and if that can be connected to the land uh, and the regeneration sort of associated with it um, but along with that after that we want to bring in inputs from all of these communities and uh, also uh, look at other bioregions to uh, bring in all of these stakeholders. And I'm sure each one of you here uh, holds the hat of being a member of the region ecosystem or tr the tr trusted seed community or the larger common stack community. But you might also wear the hat of a lot of these other stakeholders as well. Uh, uh, a lot of you are from Latin America, from Venezuela, some of you may know scientists and want to create regenerative projects where you live. I think, um, that is also the longer term sort of inputs here. Um, uh, shorter term inputs, sort of how incentives can be aligned. How do we create mechanisms sort of to bring these communities in? And also what communities would you like to see happen? What projects would you like to see happen? And uh, how, how, can, how can the region community sort of support you in doing that and bring in, connect the rest of the stakeholders? Um, and so, so that's sort of, a slightly longer answer there, but over to you, Will. Yeah, sure. What I was going to ask is just uh, how can Regen Network be in service to what all of you want to see in the world over at Common Stack? And that I think that the 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 kind of uh, richest aspects of this partnership will come 
in those places where members of the trusted seed say, you know, this is there's this uh, facet of of regen network that is exactly what I'm excited about and and want to be contributing to. So I think that's the um, kind of a, a meta question for us to be asking. And then as far as uh, this being a prototype here, um, I one thing I want to be mindful of is that each DAO is going to have a very unique flavor to it based on the community that we're in service to. And so I think there's going to be a whole lot that we learn here. Uh, and at the same time, I don't see us kind of bundling it into a set of best practices that get rolled out across every DAO, just because, uh, I mean, even just looking at those those two other DAO, kind of candidate DAOs that were just mentioned, they're in, in quite different contexts. And I think there will probably be a number of uh, aspects um, of their implementation that look different from whether that be the communication platforms that people use or the kinds of projects they're engaged with or all of those things. Uh, so yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for now. I can I can drop a quick response to that unless anyone else wants to jump in. Cool. Um, yeah. So I mean, at the common stack, we're often working on the on the design pattern layer. Um, so a lot of these tools that we have are are very generalized, um, and they need to be grounded in some in some context. And I personally, I'm really excited that one of those contexts is is Regen Network, and uh, you know, it's kind of the heart of of these tools. It's it's applying these tools for something that is sorely needed for the world. Um, and I think there's uh, you know, ample evidence that Regen Network is working on the right things uh, with the right people and the right tools. Um, so I'm really excited to see sort of the, um, the generalized work and the design patterns that we're working on at the Common Stack. Um, we often say, you know, when, when people ask, when, when can they use our tools? Um, we always say, you know, we have to work at least initially with very tech forward communities. Um, they need to understand the state of these tools, that they're iterative. Um, they're not, you know, uh, um, perfect off the bat. There are, you know, some steps that need to be made, some mutual um, exploration and experimentation. Uh, and I couldn't think of a better group than than Regen uh, to to be experimenting in those tools with us and, you know, grounding those design patterns and those sort of uh, more abstract tools in a real purpose for uh, delivering much needed change to the world. Um, so I think that was the the, the first part of the, the question there. Uh, and I just wanted to say I'm really happy to see this happening because there there needs to be purpose behind these tools or else we're just building you know more tools for the sake of tools and, and we're not actually getting at the underlying problems that uh, that are running rampant in the world. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say one thing and then I want to address um, Kryptonio. Antonio had a question. Um, I think also the beautiful part is we don't have to reinvent the wheel, and there are so many frameworks that are already there. Um, I've also been diving into governance research uh, more so over the last months, and of course, we often refer to Eleanor Ostrom and, and her principles for governing the commons, um, which Jeff started some years ago, and now Livia and, and many others um, are kind of implementing in the token engineering commons and are seeing what does that really look like, and researching polycentric governance frameworks um, there's a lot of existing literature on this, but what does this look like in Web3? How do we set the conditions for um, various uh, nested institutions and kind of different decision-making centers? Um, there's also, you know, the challenge is we're kind of between the tyranny of tyranny and the tyranny of structurelessness. And uh, working on many DAOs myself, um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're in this stage of this balance between structure and flow and, um, how, what kind of cultural practices um, can we implement? And again, as, as everyone's saying here, and I, I'm glad this is being highlighted, is how do we also maintain this heterogeneity or this diversity? Um, we can't impose, um, there, there isn't like an imposition or one thing that's gonna work for every community. We don't want that also, because that's kind of the colonialist mentality. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting to continue to explore and develop these things. Um, and yeah, did, did anyone else have a comment? Otherwise, uh, we've got just one minute till top of the hour. I'm happy to hang for a few more minutes. Um, I don't know if anyone has to jump immediately, um, but we can certainly stay for another five or 10 minutes. Uh, Kryptonio, did you wanna ask your question before we run out of time? Uh, 
Antonio's usually not shy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm walking right now, but um Hey Ben, <clears throat> are you in Florida now or No, I'm on the uh the Great Island of Sicily. But uh, why well, ask that? Because uh, just curious, as we kind of move to the distributed staking model and, you know, Regen and Cosmos has been really, you know, future forward on that and how to get more people involved with kind of the staking at home or even a little bit more organized um, uh, staking kind of education initiatives. So that was, you know, when the, Dan mentioned being in Barcelona, that's kind of what uh, inspired the question. Yeah, I can I can speak a little bit, and maybe Dan, if you want to fill in any. Griff Griff is actually the 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 guy who runs you know all the infrastructure at the Giveth House. I know there is uh, a DAP node running there. There is um, you know they they run some uh, Ethereum validator nodes and a, a few different um, projects. Maybe Dan, if you have any idea about that, you can fill in the gaps in my technical knowledge. There um, would definitely be interested to to talk about um, validator needs and opportunities in in on the Regen network side. Um, I think there's definitely, as you say, lots of opportunity there, um, but I'm not exactly sure what, what we currently have running. And if Dan is around, maybe he has an idea. Otherwise, we can definitely explore that further uh, with Griff. Yeah, I, I, to be fully honest, I had no idea. I just, <laughs> uh, I can, I can, I probably Griff doesn't have the full idea as well, but I'm happy to make a connection with the that note team as well. Like uh, that's. I my troubleshooting down here in the house has just been like resetting the, <laughs> the that note. So anyway, I'm happy to bridge uh, to what the guy's been doing. Uh, yeah, but I'll I'll channel that. Will DM you, man. Happy to help. I mean, just for context here. Um, uh, uh, I mean, you, this is this is a very tech forward and smart community. Um, but still, uh, just in case people are not familiar with the with the context here, region is based on Cosmos SDK, right? Which has its flavor of proof of stake governance, and validators hold a very very important role here. Um, and something we are exploring um, through the initial process of endowment is uh one do these communities uh do they want to sort of have their own uh, validator node do they uh, partner up with the validator and uh the validators who have volunteered to be buddies i mean that's one side of things so if for instance trusted seed would want to be its own uh, validator uh, uh i mean sure we would need to look at sort of a few uh uh, logistics on the region end, which which Gregory can can chime in on, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's that's definitely possible, right? And on the other hand, also uh, if if this is an interesting sort of higher level uh, token engineering question, for instance, um, on how we can connect the proof of stake governance model with communities on the ground. I mean, what would it look like to have a bioregional validator who also, for instance, if uh, works with other communities located locally and creates an ecosystem service um, for that region and represents that region on, on the ledger, right? Uh, is, is something we've been asking ourselves. And if it even uh, is uh, a, a question worth going after, so uh, if, if that's sort of a question worth exploring as well, I mean, we'd, we'd love to do that with you. Yeah, so maybe that's a good segue. Oh, Antonio, did you have anything further you wanted to add or? Okay, awesome. So yeah, maybe that's a good No, that was just very well articulated, thank you. <laughs> nice, uh, glad to hear from you as well. Um, so yeah, maybe that's kind of a nice segue to wrap up this discussion a little bit um, I think some of us on the ComSec team are traveling quite heavily um, and it's just seasonal. So I think for, you know, this will be something we kind of sit with and process for a couple of weeks. And then I think maybe moving forward, um, what we're going to be doing is, yeah, looking for somebody of, uh, who want, is interested to work on this to help us drive this initiative and work very closely with Dan. Um, 
to figure out, you know, how to move forward. Maybe we can have kind of a, a Miro or a Miro session, a brainstorming session, um, and kind of crowdsource some some ideas about how we move forward. And um, I think I'd say those are two things that you can look out for, maybe in the next few months uh, as we move into a, a little more slow season and make space to to really focus on this work. And like Greg said, kind of take the slow roll approach. Um, there's certainly no rush. Um, so yeah, we're working really hard in the back end to, to get things set up meantime. Um, and I just want to leave one last opening if, if anyone wants to ask a question, say bye, um, send any vibes, uh, feel free. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. It's been a fantastic call. Um, I think there are lots more questions that uh, we can continue to answer. Uh, we'll probably have more uh, brainstorming calls like this. Um, uh, T. Rossi, sorry, I didn't catch your name, but definitely happy to to chat more about um, yeah about uh, yeah, ambassadors well, bridges. Yeah. Yes. My sorry, what was Jabo. that? Sorry, my name Jabo. is Jabo. 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 Cool. Jabo. Cool. Great. Thanks very Thank much. You. Um, Thank yeah, you so eager much to, for to chat more. Great. I will contact you. Sounds great. All right, thanks everybody. We'll catch you again next time. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Bye everybody. Have a great day. Thanks everybody.